miniatures take time. That's something I have said a lot on my channel over the years, yet I'm still constantly surprised at how much time they actually take. This entire month I am focusing on finishing up this project, which is my Adams Family Mini Mansion, which has taken me over 10 years to complete. Part of the reason for that is definitely a little bit of putting things off till later, like I'll do this later, but that later time is now. So I'm going to be doing little projects that need to be finished up, and specifically today I am working in Cousin It's room and the conservatory here. The first thing I need to do is work on the windows because that is definitely something I have been putting off. So let's get started. As you can see, Cousin It's room has two gaping holes in the side where windows should be. I built this room over a year ago, so I honestly don't remember what the sizes should be. So to help me with that, I'm going to slide in a piece of paper, use a pencil, and trace around the windows so I can start to figure out what size I need to make the windows. I'm using a drafting triangle and a circle template to figure out what the actual dimension should be since my tracing is a little bit rough, and I'm going to mark those out. The reason for this is I am using a computer program to make this go a little bit faster and I need to be able to put those into the computer. I am using Affinity Designer to do this and basically all I'm creating are the leading pieces that are going to go into the window. This is very similar to the way I did the Captain's Quarters stained glass windows, so if you want to see that video, I will link it down below so um, you can get a little bit more information on the process. But I'm not actually doing stained glass windows this time, I wanted to keep them clear. And as you can see, I was struggling with this part of the file a little bit, but I finally got it. Um, I'm just wanting to keep them clear windows. I don't... Uh, its room is very... I don't want to say plain, but the colors are very muted, and so I didn't want to put any bright colors into the windows. I just wanted to keep them clear with black leading. Here you can see I have laser cut them out, and I have my pieces ready, two pieces per window. I'm going to be using some acetate to make these. This is basically just transparency that you would use like in the classroom. And in order to make these a little bit blurry, I've done this process before, but I've never really showed it. Um, I like having blurry windows because then when you're taking photos of your interior, it doesn't really, you can't really see what's outside, which is usually, you know, life-size things. What I'm doing is sanding both sides, and then I am going to glue the pieces that I laser cut out onto the sanded surface. It doesn't look great now, but when I add the UV resin, it really does look like a window that's just a little bit foggy, and I think it gives it a very aged look to the glass. I'm gluing one piece of the leading to one side, flipping it over, and I will glue the other piece, making sure that I line up all the lines so once I can see through the windows, it looks like it's one piece of leading that's going through the entire piece of glass. Now it's time to make this window come to life, and that's going to be using the UV resin. I'm putting weights on either side of the window to keep the acetate as flat as possible while I am applying the UV resin. The acetate is very, very thin, and so if I don't put the weights there, it could possibly warp. I'm using the UV resin and filling each individual pane of glass and using a toothpick to move it around until I make sure that it is filled in all the little spaces and gone to the very edge of the leading. We learned in the Captain's Quarters video, if you've seen that one, that starting with the UV light far away and then slowly, slowly moving it towards the window gives you a better chance of the window not warping. And so I did that technique again with this window and it still works really, really well. I had very minimal warping on either one of these windows. After the UV has cured it on both sides, I do this on both sides of the acetate, you can see the difference between the sanded part and the part that has the UV resin. It no longer looks sanded, but it does have a little bit of a blurry look to it. You can see my hand through it, you can see the colors, you can see the light, but you can't see the details of my hands. 
I'm also going to add a layer of polycrylic on both sides of the acetate or well now it's UV resin the acetate that's covered with UV resin and this is going to seal in the black paper once that's done I can carefully cut around the window I cut it just a little bit big at first so I can test it into the window opening but once I realize that it fits or it's a little bit too big then I can cut it down here are my two pieces and you can see Lurch over there on the, on the uh, you know, balcony just hanging out. Here are my two windows that I am going to put into the slot. I'm just going to add tacky glue all around where the window is going to meet the inside of the window opening and then press the window into that area. And I did put some little paint bottles inside. This wall is at an angle and so it had the potential to fall out if the glue hadn't held already. So I put little glue bottles inside to hold it in place while everything was drying. Here's how it looks with both windows installed and you can really see the fuzzy effect this process gives. Now that the windows are in and drying, I really wanted to make something specifically for Cousin It. Besides the lowered ceilings and the Cousin It figure himself, there's really not anything in there that screams Cousin It. So I thought the perfect thing to put in there would be a little plaque with a collection of bow ties, which is one of his signature pieces. To create the bow tie rack, I'm going to start with some random scraps of fabric that I had in my collection and a jumbo popsicle stick that is going to create the rack itself. To start out, I'm going to take my fabric and turn it over to the back side and I am using some matte Mod Podge on the back. The reason for this is the bow tie pieces are going to be very, very small and I really don't feel like trying to get the ends so that they don't fray and I'm definitely not hemming anything so by adding the Mod Podge to the back of the fabric whatever I cut out of that fabric is already not going to fray. I'm also going to go ahead and cut the popsicle stick down to size and I've had several people ask me how I cut popsicle sticks with the easy cutter because it's, it is a little bit difficult. I cut through one half and then I flip it over line it up with the little indention you can see on the side and then cut through the other half and that's the easiest way to get through popsicle sticks. I also took an alcohol ink marker and decided to use that as a way to stain the wood and that's really all I'm doing for the rack. To create each bow tie, I'm making sure I cut through the part of the fabric that I treated with the Mod Podge on the back. I'm going to cut one thicker strip that is going to be the thickness that I want my bow tie, and then one thinner strip that is going to go around the center of the bow tie. I cut down the length of the thickest strip to be a little over one inch. I added glue to the center of that strip and then folded the edges in until it took hold with the glue in the center. Once that's done, I'm going to add one more little daub of glue. And for this, I'm using Fabri-Tac, but tacky glue should work as well. I'm going to glue one end of the thinner strip into that glob of glue and let it dry. And this is what I have so far. Once that's dry, I'm going to squish down the center and I'm sorry I'm off screen for this, but I'm just squishing it down, wrapping the thinner strip around the bow tie until it pinches it closed. Add a little bit of glue to the back and then finish wrapping the thinner strip so that it goes completely around the bow tie and gets into the glue at the back. Once that's dry, I'm gonna take my toothpick push it into the sides of the bow tie so that I make sure that it opens up and then I can cut off the excess of the thinner strip and it is quite long but the length will help you keep hold of it and get it to go around the bow tie. Here's how the bow ties look all lined up on the popsicle stick that I previously stained and all I'm going to do is glue them down with some tacky glue. I have one extra one that I'll put on a dresser but I'm pretty happy with how this came out. Very simple, but I think it definitely screams cousin it. Now that we've got the windows in and the bow tie rack complete, I think it is time to put its entire room together and finish it up. 
One thing I noticed in this process was that the edge of its room is still completely white. I have painted the edges of all the rooms brown in the dollhouse, except for this one. And I think painting the edges all one color really give the entire project a cohesive look. And even though they're made from different kits or different materials, it all looks like one piece. I'm going to go ahead and permanently glue in its bow tie rack and I really like it by the door. I can just imagine him standing there picking out his bow tie before he walks out the door. He of course also needs a mirror to make sure that he is looking good. He needs his bed and this one is so short. I think it's so cute. He's got probably the fanciest, shiniest furniture in the entire Adams Family house. Of course, his tastes are not quite as spooky and ooky as everybody else's. This chair is a petite princess chair. I think it's 1 16th scale, which works perfectly for Cousin It's room. I also want to put in a bedside table because I had decided to do a bedside lamp for Cousin It. I'm going to add his top hat, and because Cousin It typically likes to travel, I thought I would add a travel bag or like a little carpet bag. This is made by the Dolls Cobbler, and I love this piece, so I wanted to put it at the end of the bed to make it appear as though he had just got in or was just about to head out. Because his ceilings are so low, I didn't want to try and install a light. So instead, I purchased this small hurricane lamp. It's battery powered. It was a pretty good deal. I will put the dealer down below so you can check it out. Really good prices on battery powered miniatures. And here is how its room is looking. I think it's really inviting. I think it, I think it definitely gives off Cousin It vibes. You'll have to let me know down in the comments what you think. And especially with the little bow ties, I think that was the piece I needed to wrap it all up. And I really like the glow of the light coming through the windows. Now that its room is complete, I can focus on the conservatory, which is directly underneath his room. There's lots of things that I had kind of partially completed, and I also need to continue gluing some things down so that when I am setting up the house or taking the house down, I'm not dealing with a bunch of little conservatory pieces rolling all over the place. Hello, are you back? Thank you. Thank you. That's very nice. Here are all the pieces that I've had sitting in the conservatory room forever, and they all need to be consolidated and grouped. I also went ahead and purchased some Tack It Over and Over by Aileen's Glue. I have never used this before. It was suggested to me for tacking things in place and not making it permanent, so I figured we could try that together today in this video. Right now I'm just going through and putting together things that will need like processes done or will end up being together in the end. Some things I'm going to glue permanently, some things maybe will be tacked if I like the tacking process. I do learn a few things in this process so I will share that with you. My first tacking experience is going to be with this little piranha fish tank. It is constantly falling over because it is top heavy, which means all the things on it fall over with it. Now the back does say to use a brush to brush it on. I was being a little bit lazy here and just decided to put it on as thinly as I could with the bottle itself, which to be honest is probably how I would do it anyway. I put it on the bottom of all four pieces and it took about 20 minutes or so for it to dry to where it was clear. And I think that means it's dry when it's clear because that's what is typical with tacky glue, which is the same brand and then I stuck it onto the bottom of the fish tank and it held pretty well. I was actually very impressed at the beginning and then once I started putting some of the heavier items on there I did notice that the like the um, little glass of pickled eggs it fell off the back pretty quickly and then following it was the plant which was also a heavier item. 
So what I learned from this was with lighter weight items, I think it would work really well for those items to stay in place if you're moving things around abruptly. If you want something to just not fall over when you touch it, this may also be a good option. But if you're wanting something heavy to stay on the project, um, when you're moving it or putting it away, you may still want to look into other options. So it definitely has its place, it has its benefits, but um, I'll probably use them interchangeably as I decide what I want. So most of this shelf I am using tacky glue to permanently glue things down, but this bird cage, for example, I may want to put a bird in it later. So for that, I added the tack it over and over and then waited for it to dry and then glued it onto the top part of the shelf. This way, later on, when I have the bird or the bat or whatever I want to put in there, I can simply remove the cage off the top shelf and it's ready to go. I didn't have to rip anything. Here's the items that are on the shelf. We have some little seedlings. We have a Venus flytrap that's having a tasty lunch. We have some more meat for the carnivorous plants. We have a plant mister that Lurch uses during the movie. And we've got some other plants on the top shelf here. So I'm pretty happy with this one. Time to move on to the next. This is Morticia's workbench. It's a piece that I got off of a free table. It's not the most detailed miniature, but it's made from a cigar box and something about it I just found so charming. And I think it works perfectly for a potting shed bench. This piece of course has to have the iconic scene of Morticia snipping the heads off the roses. I did want to add a few other things. There's a tea service, there's some seedlings that she's sprouting, or are they called sprouts? Once I don't know, plant people, you'll have to let me know what they're called once they're coming out of the ground. I do have this pair of scissors. It's not my favorite pair of scissors, so I will probably tack that down for now. And when I find one that I want to trade out, I will trade out the scissors. The little pitcher is one I made. It's like one of my very first minis. And these roses were sent by a friend named Sands. She's also the one that made the hookah. She sent them all the way from Singapore for me, for Morticia, and so I'm finally getting to put them into place permanently. The first thing I'm gonna do is get the roses so that they look like a genuine bundle, and then start clipping them at the bottom so that they'll fit in the little vase. Then I'm going to add glue around the wire that's holding them all together because I want them to stay together permanently forever. And then they can be added to the vase and I can start snipping off the roses that are off to one side. I just want it to look like she was in the middle of snipping the heads off and I'm keeping all the heads so that I can sprinkle them over the top of the workbench showing that they've, they're, yeah, they've been chopped off. I'm pretty happy with how this came out. I think it also leaves a little bit of room for maybe a few more things if I decide to add them, but I like it. Now I'm moving on to the little lattices, the la lattice work, I guess I would call it, that I had previously purchased at a craft store. They had like a fairy garden area, and I thought these would look really cool on the wall. So what I'm doing is taking some fake plants and I'm just winding them in and out of the wire. And I'm also going to add some Spanish moss to the entire thing. And those are kind of kind of look like old dead vines. So there'll be a mixture of live living vines and old dead vines that were never cleaned off. Once I'm happy with their placement, I'm just taking some tacky glue and wherever the two pieces meet, I'm adding some glue. This isn't going to be an easy thing to glue so I'm putting it on top of some paper some like waxy type paper so that I can let it dry and anywhere it's touching the paper it'll come off easily because there's just kind of glue everywhere to make sure everything stays stuck down. For these last few pieces I wanted to add a pot into this macrame miniature that I found. I thought it's an ode to the times of when the original TV show came out. 
and I was thinking about using the coffee ground mixture that I've used before for the soil, but then I thought the moss made a really good filler for these pots because, well, at least in my garden, <laughs> there are pots where um, the plants have died and they haven't been cleaned out yet. I also put moss in the one that's going into the macrame piece and then put another plant growing out of it. And I really do like the way it looks, so I might be doing a few more pots here and there whenever I need them with the moss. It was really fast and I like the look, especially for abandoned or old looking miniatures. Adding the pot into the macrame piece was super easy. I just fit it in there, make sure that the plant parts are going out the sides that I like, and glue it down with some tacky glue. Then of course I need to add some aging to the pots. This is just watered down black paint, and yeah, pretty easy stuff. The next thing is something I've been avoiding for a very long time, and it's dealing with these tiny chess pieces. In the first movie, uh, Gomez is sitting there playing chess with Thing, and so I definitely wanted a chess board in the conservatory. I had a suggestion from Joanne and I think a few other people about gluing the pieces down to a piece of acetate, and since I already had the acetate out, I thought go ahead and give it a try, and then that would fit over the chessboard, so if I wanted to remove the pieces from the chessboard table, I could just remove the piece of acetate. Now I am gluing them down with super glue, so I probably could remove the chess pieces from the acetate if I wanted to, but um, for now they're just kind of hanging on that piece with some super glue. I think this is a great idea, and again, another solution for those who really aren't ready to glue something permanently down. If you wanted something to stay in place, but you didn't want to mar the surface of your furniture, you could definitely lay down a piece of plastic and glue things on top of that, and it may even be a good way to kind of get an idea of what you like. Here you can see the chessboard all laid out, and it is still separate from the piece, as you can see here. I decided to try adding some of the Tack It Over that we've been experimenting with to both sides of the chessboard because I did notice, because I didn't cut it perfectly to size, it does move around a little bit on top of the table. So if I add the Tack It Over, let it dry, and then add the pieces on top, in theory it should be it should hold everything in place and then I should be able to take it off later down the road and everything stay separate. So thank you so much for that suggestion. I think it worked really, really well. That's all the items for the conservatory and I think we're ready to get them into the project. Before I put all of these miniatures inside the conservatory, there's a few things I need to finish up. I need to add doorknobs to the doors, and then I need to install a light fixture. I had decided to do battery-powered lights throughout this house because when I started, I really didn't set it up for wired lights. Thankfully, that means they're pretty easy to install, so let's do it. Since the doorknobs all the way at the back of the room, I'm gonna go ahead and start there. Here you can see it's a pre-bought doorknob. I thought these were kind of cool looking. I hadn't seen them before. Kind of fancy that it would work for a mansion. I just glued it onto the door and I'm gonna let it set before I age it. I also bought this light fixture from the same person I bought the hurricane lamp. Again, I will link that shop down below for you. It's battery powered and installed with magnets. I actually have an entire video where I install magnet lights if you want more information. This one's a little different because it has two separate magnets and I'm installing it without a ceiling medallion because my ceiling here, as you can see, has crumbled away. So what I'm gonna do is mark out with a Sharpie the places that the two small magnets need to go and I'm just making sure that they are the correct width apart, and then I'm going to super glue them to the ceiling, and I'm gonna let it dry completely before I install the light fixture. While that's drying, I can go ahead and start putting in some of the other pieces. I'm putting in this shelf first. Uh, don't mind P Dr. Penderschloss up there in the corner. She's just always hanging out there. 
I'm putting the shelf first in the corner because these two pieces that I'm putting on the wall are going to depend on where that shelf is at. I am gluing them permanently to the wall. I don't want them falling down. I don't want to have to reinstall them so they're permanent. And I'm also gluing that half uh, basket to the back wall above the door. I'm now putting the chessboard in there because I want to figure out where the best place for my macrame hanging piece is and I don't want it to be in the way of the chessboard. I'm making a small dot at the top of the ceiling and I realized I'm going to have to drill into the ceiling in order to install this. So I'm using my Dremel and I'm just going to drill straight up. Thankfully the ceiling on this is pretty thick. I'm just trying to make sure I don't drill up into its room. Once I had the hole drilled, I just had to take a piece of wire, loop it around the top of the macrame piece, and then put some glue and insert it into the hole. Thankfully, I had glue that took hold pretty quickly, and also it was just a tight-fitting drilled hole, and so everything worked out pretty good. Finally, I just had to make sure that I aged that doorknob before I put anything else in there, and it was hard to reach. This is Morticia's workbench. It goes right underneath Dr. Penderschloss. And of course, Cleopatra needs to be in there. She was made by my friend Tallulah Bell. And the piranha tank goes right in the center. Now it was time to put in the light fixture. And I left this in because I learned a good life lesson. Magnets have polarity. And I put one of the magnets in upside down so it was repelling one side of the light. Therefore, I had to go in with my X-Acto knife and basically carve the magnet out of the ceiling because it held really well. The super glue worked super well. And then I replaced the magnet so that it was the correct polarity and would hold onto the light once it was installed in the ceiling. And that's it for the conservatory. Everything is in there. I'm super happy with it. I really like the vibe of the room. I like the red colored light fixture to go with the red in Cleopatra and the red in the floor. I know a lot of times Adam's family is pictured very dark, but they do like color here and there. The last thing I want to finish up in this video isn't actually on this side of the house, it's on the opposite end of the house. It's a little blank spot that I had left when I was doing the siding. If you've seen the first movie, you will know that these little spots are specifically meant for Wednesday and Pugsley's doors, I guess I would call them. They're basically escape hatches for the kids to get out of the house quickly. To create these, I decided to do, a, again, a laser cut piece. They're just layers of shapes on top of each other. I can't tell you how many times I said Wednesday and Pugsley as I was designing these to make sure that I did not misspell their names. I used some chipboard for the first time in my laser cutter to cut out these thinner pieces and they're just going to add detail to these doors. They're supposed to be like heavy iron doors I think and they have these really big hinges and these big pieces to them but because they're on the side of my dollhouse I made the hinges a little bit more subdued because they're in a spot where if it's being transported they could easily be like caught on clothing or caught on someone's arm and so I made the hinges where the doors actually rotate up if you've seen the movie I made the hinges just a little bit smaller and a little bit simpler here's how they look once they're put together and now it's time for some paint I did a base coat of gray over both of them that's just immediately what I think of when I'm trying to make something look like metal and then I did a stippling process with different colors and I just went back and forth until I was happy with how it looked. So I added some black and then I went back over it with gray. Now I'm adding some brown and then I even added some lime green in the end to show that possibly some mold or mildew had kind of built up on the face of these doors. I also used a detail brush to dry brush some black in the creases where it, the dirt and grime over the years would have built up. 
I think this added a lot of character and definition to the pieces, and I'm happy that I chose to take the time to do this. Finally, I mixed together some watered down black paint, and I'm just going to carefully dab my brush, this is a very thin brush, into the letters, letting the paint and the water kind of spread within the letters. Because they're engraved by the laser cutter, this is a really easy way to darken the letters. I think I already said finally, but the real last thing I'm going to do is to dry brush some white paint over the face of the piece so that it just highlights all the details. And I will show you the difference between Pugsley's and Wednesday's before I add the highlight with the dry brushing. Dry brushing is just where you take most of the paint off of it and you can see that it really does look a little bit more highlighted and those details really pop out. So highlighting with white does really do a lot, even if you're working on something that's a little bit darker. Now that they're done, I can go ahead and install them in the placeholders. And I like how they turned out. I'm so glad that I installed these placeholders quite a while ago, over a year ago, to remind me that I really wanted to add these doors. It's definitely a very unique part of the house that you see in the original movie. And of course, once they're installed, I'm going to dry brush with some black paint all around so it looks like they've been there for years and years and years. And here's how they look all finished. So that's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed it. In next week's video, I will be focusing on some other parts of the house that need to be finished up, and I'll just be going small project by small project until I get it all done. One last little bit of housekeeping in last week's live stream. I let you all know that the kit for the icebox would be up this week, but I am having technical difficulties with my printer my 3D printer, and so that will be postponed. If you ever want to make sure that you are keeping up with the latest news of what's going on in my store, there is a link for my email list down below in the description box. You can just scroll down, sign up. You have to be 16 years or older to sign up for that, but that will keep you up to date on all of that information. I hope you all have an amazing week, and I will see you in the next one. Bye. <laughs> Are you done being needy? Hmm? Are you done? No. No. It's like I have a Bentley House Minis hat. Should be my new intro. Bentley House Minis.